Hello, I'm Professor Torres from the University of Puerto Rico here in Arecibo and uh, I work in the physical and chemistry department and here I'm showing a contraption about how to convert uh, compressed air into eventually electrical uh, electricity using a pneumatic system. And uh, this system was put together by a good friend of mine named Carlos Feliciano. And uh, we based the design on a pneumatic piston, uh, some electronics that I will be explain explaining. And that's basically it. Uh, the most important part here is that uh, compressed air goes right through this valve. I'm about right now, as you cannot see those knobs that needle there, but I'm about 80 psi, okay? That goes right through this valve into this regulator, pressure regulator. I haven't said yet this, this one, so I want to try to regulate the pressure using the uh, compressor valve. And anyway, air goes right through here into the this three-way solenoid valve and basically how it works is when the com when the solenoid is uh, engaged air goes right through the bottom there's two pores here one in the top one in the bottom this pore in the bottom goes right into the cylinder at this side will push the piston in this direction so the piston will be coming out at the end this way now when the uh, solenoid is disengaged, air will go right to the top, pushing the piston down, and any air trapped within the cylinder will come out right through this port here. That's what is called a three-way valve. Uh, what makes the whole thing work, basically, is this little magnet that is right here. That magnet, I can show you what it looks like. It's right there. Okay, so this is the magnet. That magnet, when it's properly aligned with these relay switches, which are basically magnetic switches, uh, when it contacts this one in particular, the, this relay here will latch on the on position, energizing this three-way valve. When it's energized, as I told you, air will go right through the bottom, pushing the piston up. So with this engage, piston will move up. Now when the piston reach the second limit switch, the relay will be de energized. When is the energized the latching effect stop? This one here will de energize. Air will go through the top, pushing the piston down and that's basically it no more to it now we will be operating this about no more than five psi as i'm showing this gauge here this gauge go from zero to 30 psi and we will be operating about five no more than that uh pressure of five the whole thing shake too much not good for safety and therefore we will not uh go above 5 psi. Everything was mounted on this piece of uh, wood, and uh, so uh, there's a switch right here. That's in the off position. Now it's in the on position. So with that said, I can open the compressor or the air valve in the compressor, and uh, let me put a little bit of air and see what happens. So before I do that, let me be sure that I'm properly aligned here. I want to be close to the limit switch, a little gap of about two millimeters or so, but not too close because if it mag the magnet touch the limit switches, uh, that's not good for the project. Okay, so I'm using, let's see, about two millimeters distance between the magnet and the limit switch is good enough so for uh, for uh, the feel of the magnet uh, need to be uh, 
sensed by the limit switches. So let's see what happens. We put some pressure and uh, hopefully will work. I'm popping the valve. I don't want to push it too much. It's a little bit. There we go. Uh, I'm about one psi at the most, and as you can see the piston moving back and forth, and you can hear the uh, solenoid valve uh, pushing air and the and the exit right through this port here. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put more air into it and see how this works. I'm pushing more air. About I'm about five feet aside. The whole thing is moving like crazy. So you can tell right there. That's the system moving back and forth quite fast. We haven't yet calculated the speed of the system, something that we will do at a later time. The pneumatic cylinder is, right, is shown right here. Hard to tell the those number what they are, but I will tell you. Basically, it says that the bore is about 38 millimeters, and the stroke on this piston is about 100 millimeters. That's basically the information about that. Um, nothing to it. Um, about again, let's take a look at it. About close to 4 psi. I'm gonna try to go a little bit higher than that, but not that high. That would cause trouble. So let's see. Taking too much. The needle is run out. Taking too much. These two are hard to tell. But I would say I'm about an average about 6 psi. So now you can see right here that everything looks like a blur. Piston is moving back and forth, and uh, hard to tell where it is. And uh, I guess that's about it. Nothing to it. Eventually, when we add the flywheel, this will look a lot better, and we will try to get some energy out of compressed air, which is eventually the aim of this project. With that said, thank you for watching. See you next.